For most athletes, the Olympic season is full of nerves and trepidation. In the fall of 2013, Kirsten Moore Towers was a three-time world team member and on the verge of being named to Canada's Olympic team for the Sochi Winter Games. Moore Towers was currently then ranked fourth in the world with partner Dylan Moscovich. And from her demeanor and competition, it was clear that nerves were not part of the equation. The Olympic year for me was more about, it wasn't so much stressful like I think it was for other people. I was just really, really excited. And, you know, training was really good. We were really solid at that point. And the day we actually qualified, I didn't think I would feel so much relief as I felt that day. Um, and also because, you know, we, we did have a good program. I think we had a, a, one mistake, but it didn't matter because it didn't matter that we didn't win nationals because we were finally, we had worked so hard for this and we were finally going to get to go. Upon making the team for Sochi with partner Dylan Moscovich, the excitement built. Our Olympic team was so super close and I remember when we were parting ways to go train, we only had two weeks bef uh, before Olympics after nationals and Eric and I were, Eric Bradford and I were hugging goodbye and he said, look both ways before you cross the street because everyone was so just wanting everything to go as planned so that we were all able to actually make it to the games after qualifying. For more towers, the Olympic experience, one which included winning a team silver medal, was an experience that lived up to her expectations. After going, I I just know I need to go again. You know, you, you just have to. It's the most amazing thing. I remember when we got there and we had just been there for maybe half an hour and we were learning of all the things. We were walking in the Olympic Park, Dylan, I believe Chris and I, and we just kept saying, oh my goodness, I hope there's enough time to do all of these cool things. You know, at the time we needed to just chill out because we were there for over three weeks. But it was so cool and even after we competed, the actual competition experience was special. Uh, we were in a warm-up with Russians both, both times and it was unlike any other thing to actually not hear, you know, I couldn't hear Dylan speak to me and I don't think he could hear me speak to him because people were chanting Russia so loudly. Um, you know, luckily it didn't affect us too much and we had our best Olympic experience. We couldn't have skated too much better. That was pretty much, um, you know, we had minor mistakes, but it's pretty much, we did it to the best of our ability. And I think that's really all I wanted for my Olympic experience was to go there and be proud of the performance I had and then to enjoy it to the fullest after I was done. Following the games, Moore Towers and Moscovich went on to compete at the World Championships in Saitama and earned their second consecutive fourth place finish. With teams ahead of them expected to retire, it was thought possible that the team would finally earn an elusive world medal. Shocking then was the decision announced by Moore Towers to end her partnership with Moscovich just weeks later. To be honest, I don't really remember too much about this time. It was such a, a blur and a whirlwind and to be honest it happened so fast. Um, it was a, a very, I don't want to say spur of the moment because obviously a lot of thought went into it but it for such a large decision it did happen very quickly. I didn't know whether whether or not we would ever actually get there and I did feel like you know with the age difference between Dylan and I, uh, I do feel like the longevity of our career could be a little bit different. Um, it's not that I don't feel like he could skate till the next Olympics. I feel like he absolutely could and probably will. You know, he's a strong dude, he's a tough dude, and I, above all other people, know what his work ethic is like. But I felt like um, I deserved a chance to to try with someone new and I, I felt like that was the that was time. Given their proximity to the medal rostrum at the World Championships, Moore Towers' decision to end her successful partnership is one that has continued to leave the skating community feeling baffled. I will say that the way things are put into the media is not always the way that they are. Um, I think that Dylan is amazing and I, I love Dylan. The way that Dylan and I appeared at competition is really how it was. We did get along, we did have a lovely camaraderie on the ice, um, but it was time. I, I really feel like it was time and the issue that I had was that I was okay with it and Dylan seems to be per perfectly fine with it, but other people are not, you know? And 
for it doesn't matter what reason we broke up, you know, because it, it's not anyone else's life, it's our life. And for sure, I'm, I'm sure that Dylan was upset and absolutely had a right to be, you know, but did... And of, of course, the, the people that watch us and would miss us as a team for sure have a right to be upset, but do they have a right to criticize the decision or m make up a reason why it happened? No. You know, and what I was starting to feel through the year was if I'm fine and Dylan's fine, everybody else should be fine. Following the split, it was time to find a partner. More Towers faced the decision of choosing between two of Canada's most eligible skaters. Well, I only did tryouts with two different people, the other one being Mervyn Tran, who is ironically one of my favorite training mates here. Um, but Mike and I had above um, the elements that we were doing, there was a, a camaraderie to our skating that I enjoyed. I felt like with Dylan, I had the utmost respect from him as a partner and I had a great work ethic and I've known Mike for over 10 years and I know that he's an amazing human and he works really hard as well. So I figured um, whether, you know, my sh strengths that when I tried it with Mervyn and strengths with Mike were very different, but, and Mervyn was amazing as well, but I just felt like, um, you know, Mike and I got along well and we could maybe work so hard together that we could make it work eventually. In selecting Michael Marinaro as a partner, Moore Towers feels she has chosen wisely. He has this innate ability to recognize the good in all of the people. <laughs> um, he's remarkably good to me. He's very respectful. He's very kind. Uh, he'll drop everything he's doing to do anything for any person. Uh, and he works hard. I. I like to think that I am a hard worker and when I come in, I think I do demand a lot, which is a lot of probably what you saw last year. And so when I come in and I want to do this and that and the other thing and I ask him, he will never say no. The experience of competing against her former partner was more difficult than anticipated. I do feel like I was, I don't want to say villainized because that's a really harsh word, but I do feel like Dylan earned a lot of support. But if I'm being honest, a lot of our supporters when we were a team were because Dylan is so personable and so great with fans. And I think people liked us together, but a lot of people um, really liked Dylan as a human. I don't blame them. Dylan's a great dude. Uh, it was difficult for me because when I was on the ice at Nationals, I did feel um, a definite change in support levels, but through no fault of anybody else, you know, you, you love who you love and that's totally fine, but it was definitely difficult, for sure. Given the similarity of the last names of her two partners, Moore Towers and Marinaro were still referred to by the same MTM moniker that Moore Towers and Moscovich were known by for years. It was just one of the many criticisms that Moore Towers and Marinaro would face during the 2014-2015 season. I have never once, even with Dylan, put something on social media saying MTM. I, I can't really tell people not to call us that, you know, but I do feel that it has been a year and I feel that Dylan is very successful with Lubov and I think that people will start to not forget and I hope they don't forget because I'm very proud of what I did with Dylan, but um, lose this idea of whatever Dylan and I's breakup was and move forward. So whether we lose the nickname or not, I don't really know, but hopefully people sort of know us as, as a different thing. In addition to sharing the same nickname, Moore Towers and Marinaro were criticized for performing programs in the same style that Moore Towers performed with her previous partner. Mark gave us two really good programs, but then we were unable to see him for upkeep through the season, and in that it turned into, through no fault of anyone's I feel, um, that it was just changed into the same thing that I have done because when we created the programs, we didn't know what was going to work because we had been a team for a couple of weeks. So the way that Mark did it is not the way that it ended up working for our elements, but in that respect, we lost the program. It was gone. There was, at the end of the season, it looked nothing like what it was made to be at the beginning. 
So I think that was difficult for all of us, but in that change, we didn't know who we were as a team. We were really just kind of trying to survive. <laughs> Following the 2015 competitive season, Moore Towers and Marinero decided to move to Montreal to train under the tutelage of coaches Richard Gauthier, Bruno Marcotte, and Sylvie Fulham. In doing so, Moore Towers ended a long-standing relationship with coaches Chris and Christy Wirtz. I think we kind of felt like, or at least I personally felt like, if you do what you always, you've always done, you get what you've always got. And I felt like I had really run my course in Waterloo and it had worked well for Dylan and I, but Mike and I are a completely different thing. We're a completely t different team, different story, uh, different strengths, different weaknesses, and I felt like our weaknesses were not being addressed so much there as I would have liked them to. And um, this is clearly the place to be. You know, they have the world champions and you know, among them are many, many other good teams that we can learn from every day. So. It was a good decision for us. It was a difficult one. I do love Chris and Christy and they did a lot for me, but it was time. When deciding to move to Montreal, Moore Towers realized it would mean training with former chief rivals Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford. Prior to making the move, Moore Towers reached out to her longtime competitors to get their input and advice. Last year, Megan was so unnecessarily and remarkably kind to me. She uh, reached out to me when other people were mean. And, um, you know, she really kind of said, I think I remember her message after Skate Canada saying, if anyone can do this, it's you. And I think you've done a really brave thing. And I think that you and Mike can be great and stick with it. It's just going to take some time. And so, um, you know, after hearing that, she gave me the confidence. You know, rival, competitor or not, she really made me feel like we were going to be okay. Although we used to be tough competitors and we used to be very close, I would be so unbelievably silly if I was going to come here and not learn from this team. You know, Eric messaged me and said, you can call Bruno, he's waiting for your call. And I said, okay, is it good or bad? And he was like, uh, they don't bite, just call him. <laughs> That's good to me. But Bruno was um, very nice on, on the phone conversation and uh, he, let me know that they were willing to take us, which I wasn't sure. There are a lot of teams here. And uh, he seemed to be positive about the future for Mike and I and willing to work with us and to help him improve on things that I thought we needed to improve on. And of course he had his own opinion because his is far more knowledgeable than mine would be. But uh, he was really great and I knew after that that it was going to be a good thing. For coach Bruno Marcotte, being approached by Moore Towers and Marinero just prior to the World Championships was a welcome surprise that soon became an exciting challenge for the veteran coach. Well, when I got a call from Kirsten, I was like, is that, is that really her, you know? I was like, oh, nice. Um, no, I, I think for, for me, it was, it's a great challenge. You know, it's somebody that I followed for so many years, and Mike too, because Mike used to compete with Mervyn in the Junior Grand Prix. So it's two skaters that even though I never coach, and I, even though I never knew very well pers on a personal level, I knew them, you know, f like uh, like so well as a skater. So I think for me, it was I took it like a, as an amazing cha uh, challenge because I mean they came last year. In my opinion, they had a really good year. It was a brand new team, you know, and sometimes people don't realize it takes a couple of years for a team to gel. Um, so I, I think. For me, the biggest challenge, and for Richard and, and my sister, Julie, is to give them a look of their own. So when people are going to see them, it's really Kirsten and Michael. Because I think they're great for each other. I, th I, I think they have an unbelievable look. But um, I think it's very exciting, very exciting. When planning for this competitive season, Moore Towers and Marinero met with choreographer Julie Marcotte to set about forging their own identity as a pair. The vehicles they came up with are ones the Olympian is particularly fond of. We sat with Julie, who did our programs this year, and she told us she wanted us to be completely different. 
So who will turn out to be? I don't know yet. It took Dylan and I a couple of years before we actually figured out who we were as a team. But I think the vehicles that they gave us, um, that Julie gave us to skate to this year will certainly help us to be different. Well, our short program is to Etta James, if I can't have you. And it's awesome. When she played the music, she played us three music choices. And I think from uh, you know her point of view, I guess I just lit up when she played this one. I really like the idea of a man and a woman singing together. I think it kind of um, plays into the whole pair team dynamic. But it is flirty and it is fun. And uh, I think it will progress very nicely with our partnership. We're very playful with one another. Uh, we enjoy each other's company, so I think that that off-ice personality can transfer on ice and although maybe it takes a little bit longer to do that, I think that this program will help us to get there. Our free is my favorite. It's to Romeo and Juliet, the soundtrack from the movie. And um, I had actually never seen the movie until I learned we were skating to this and thought I should watch it and kind of figure out what it's all about. Of course I knew the, the story of Romeo and Juliet, but this, I think, more modern version I had not yet seen. So um, I watched it and I fell in love with the music and I fell in love with the idea and Julie really made us a great program. It's still, of course, in the works, especially because we were so focused on our short with only competing the short at um, Quebec Summer Provincials. But already the, the skating is better and it's a little more intricate. I feel like we are more natural with this style I had no idea we would be, but I think that um, certainly it will be our, at least my favorite program. I don't know if it will be stronger, but hopefully it will um, help us to get some results that we want. After moving to Montreal in March of 2015, Kirsten Moortowers and Michael Marinaro say the training environment is something that caught them by surprise. Given the large number of pairs sharing the ice, the camaraderie continues to surprise them. We didn't really know anything about the coaches when we came here, but we knew that uh, the atmosphere was going to be great. So many teams training and just daily training was going to be a huge push for us with so many good teams on the ice. Yeah, and I think at first when we got here, I. I saw, we saw everyone being so happy and I looked at Mike and I thought, they must be faking it. Yeah. Surely it's, this is not real, but we've been here since March now and it's still the same. So nobody is faking it. Everyone, I think more of the mentality here is that if you're succeeding, I am succeeding as well in helping to bring the energy up. In addition to adjusting to the new training environment and developing a new choreographic style, more Towers and Marinaro are in the process of working with coaches Richard Gauthier and Bruno Marcotte to change the technique of various elements in the hopes of achieving greater results. I think that more of our elements were completely ripped apart than we anticipated, but that is why we're here, because we needed to be more well-rounded. And so our throws last year, while landed the majority of the time, were a little bit crooked and not ideal to do quads. And I want to do quads yesterday. <laughs> so we really worked on our technique with Richard mostly, um, but Bruno a little bit, and we ended up changing our sow from throwing from the hips to throwing with the arm, the forearm, and the hip, kind of like how you would see Megan do it, or um, Marissa does, does it like that as well. Just because um, our old technique, while we had a throw, it was a little bit more, the technique was hit or miss for us, and also not natural or organic. When you're doing four rotations in the air, I think you want it to be uh, not forced, more of a natural movement, which is how you see Megan do hers, which is why it's so consistent. So luckily, we changed it just last week or not very long ago. So it's, it's still kind of two weeks. Yeah, it's still in in the works. But luckily, we get to watch Megan and also Marissa has an unreal gross out too. So we can see them doing it every day, which is very ideal for us. The process of climbing the ranks of the skating world with a new partner has often been frustrating at times for the Olympian. Upon reflection, the skater knows the journey ahead is one that will require patience. It's a slower process than I would like, and I'm a bit of a, a, bit of a perfectionist as well. So of course it's difficult. You see the changes in points, and it doesn't help when you know people are tweeting that oh, you know, it must be hard for her to get this many points less than she got last year. And, you know, it's even more difficult when they tag you in these things so that you have to see them, you know what I mean? But this just goes to show that people really don't understand. It's supposed to be about the journey. Again, I'd be lying if I told you that it wasn't difficult sometimes. 
But when I come back to reality, I understand that we will get there eventually. And I, I have the utmost belief that we will. I think that our coaches believe that we will. Um, whether you know you guys do or our peers do or the spectators do, it doesn't really matter because this is us doing it. And if we feel like you know we can get there one day, then I feel like there's nothing really stopping us but our own work ethic and our own minds. We wanted to be different last season and it didn't end up panning out. I do feel like now that we're here and we have a different coaching team and we have um, you know a different look, I do feel like it's well within our reach. And of course we want to be on the world team. You know, it's it's difficult to not compare yourselves to other teams that especially were on the world team last year, but I do feel like, you know, we can get there with this coaching team and with this environment that we're in right now. I feel like it's a very positive one. Uh, all these teams push us every day and we're really hoping to, you know, be on the podium this year at Nationals. And other than that, you know, to to look good, to look like a team, not look like you know, I'm Kirsten and he's Mike, and we skate within close proximity proximity of each other sometimes, and he lifts me in the air. You know, we really are trying to make our skating more as one and not just two single skaters skating. After a season of change, Kirsten Moore Towers is optimistic about the journey ahead. Despite experiencing a year full of changes, the skater says she is finally regaining her confidence. The confidence was real. I do feel like I lost it last year for whatever reason I don't know if uh, the newness of the partnership was getting to me or you know for some reason I was so much more nervous than I'd ever been before and I lost everything that I felt made me who I was as a skater. Uh, Dylan aside I felt like I was losing the things that made me who I was and why I was relatable and why I felt like um, I was confident all the time. I really for some reason it went away. I kind of feel like it's coming back. I felt for the first time in a year excited to compete this past weekend, which is so important for me because we need to be enjoying what we're doing. And one of the main reasons why Mike and I picked each other to skate was because we knew we would enjoy it. So for that to be gone, it's, it's not fun. This is a full-time job. It's like going into your job every day and not liking what you're doing. We still were skating every day and we were enjoying each other's company and we were enjoying the training, but for some reason that part of me was gone. And I don't know when I really realized it, but I think